How's it going everyone? It's Chow here and today we are going to talk a little bit about the dobzhansky muller model, which sometimes can confuse people just a little bit. So I'm going to go through and hopefully after this video you will have a better understanding as to what it is. So the dobzhansky muller model is really this model that's kind of looking at why is it that in some different populations there isn't gene flow. What exactly are some of the barriers to gene flow? And this model actually can show sort of a situation where you can potentially have speciation because of the result of some kind of a barrier to gene flow. So let's take a look. Now, this model is really fascinating because it's looking at some kind of a division or some kind of a separation between two different populations and that ultimately is potentially an explanation for speciation. So let's look at this particular organism here at this ancestral population. You have genotypes of either big A, uh, you have a genotype of this particular ancestral population. So you have little a, little a in this particular locus and little b, little b in this particular locus. And over time, let's say there's some kind of maybe a mutation event or the risal of a novel allele. And so this allele original, or this the alleles in this particular locus, locus one, originally is little a, little a. Now what happens is you have a big A that arises potentially due to maybe mutation or some kind of uh, genetic mixing. Some kind of event causes the arising of a novel allele. So little a, little a now becomes big A, little a in this population over here. In this second population, something different happens. The little a, little a locus over here stays the same, but the second locus, which originally was little b, little b, now becomes big b, little b. So a different allele change takes place at locus two. In this case, a big b allele showed up. And over time, the let's just say that this big a allele became fixed. It just became so common in the population that it's now fixed to that population at that particular locus. So locus one in this population up here now only has big A, big A. Same thing happens in this population down here where we have allele B, big B, that becomes fixed at locus two. And what's really fascinating is these individuals over here can breed and interbreed properly with each other. And these individuals down here can interbreed properly with each other. But these individuals up here cannot interbreed with these individuals down here. So let's just say that in our situation, the big A allele is incompatible with the big B allele. So the hybrids become inviable. So if allele big A is incompatible with allele big B, then the hybrids are not viable and therefore they cannot reproduce or they might even fail as an embryo if there's some kind of a hybrid that occurs. So as a result, these two populations have a barrier. This barrier being the big A and the big B can't come into contact with one another in some form. And that causes the separation, that barrier between two populations, and ultimately this genetic barrier might allow for a speciation event to occur. So what's really fascinating is that the jipshansky muller model also can apply to other situations such as chromosomal rearrangements. So let's just say you have these chromosomes over here. This is what they are originally. And then over time, you have uh, chromosomal fusion. So this chromosome, these chromosome ones actually end up fusing with chromosome two. So the centrif centromere fusion between chromosomes one and two, let's just say it does not disrupt chromosomal pairing during meiosis. Now we have the fixation of chromosomes one and two fusion, and this is what the population ultimately ends up. So you originally have chromosome one that fuses with chromosome two. In this population down here, you have a different kind of fusion that occurs where instead of chromosomes one and two fusing, you have chromosomes two and three fusing. And so uh, this is what happens, chromosomes two and three, they fuse, and same thing, let's say they end up being fixed. And so these two different populations are now very different. You have population one up here and population two down here, 
and the centric fusion can become fixed in the population so that ultimately the chromosomes don't pair up properly. So the chromosomes of this population does not pair up properly with this population down here during meiosis. And as a result, when a different centric fusion becomes fixed in a second population, as shown over here, the hybrids, let's say the, the individuals, a male or a female of this, in, of this uh, particular uh, population breeds with a male or female, let's just say there's a male here and then a female down here, they breed, but because there are different chromosomal arrangements, they can't pair up during meiosis. So meiosis, you have to have homologous chromosomes that pair up with one another. If there's no homologous, co uh, there's no homologous copy, for instance, these chromosomes over here, there aren't exact copies over here, there's no proper pairing, and as a result, these two populations have a barrier, a chromosomal barrier, that prevents them from producing viable offspring. So as a result, there's a barrier here, and that barrier can ultimately lead to some kind of a speciation event. So this dubchansky muller model is perhaps one way of explaining why barriers can occur, how barriers can occur, and then maybe it can be a lead-in as to how speciation can occur as well. So I hope that cleared it up just a little bit. It is usually a little bit more uh, tricky of a concept for students. And uh, I hope you found this at least mildly useful. And as always, best of luck studying, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.